Ciao ban. Namaste. Marhaba. To the sky high trees and sticky breeds, to the rhythmic, rhythmic rice fields that filled every acre of land, to the smiling men, women, and children with sweat stains patched onto the worn out t shirts, each grin drew an intricate image in our minds. From the broken pipes, the repulsive smell of sewage, the endless piles of garbage, and the pollution that shaded the skies, to the unforgettable smiles and the hard-working men, women, boys, and girls. To, to our, our own beautiful, beautiful country, country, which with culture, heritage, and the hard work of our very own ancestors. Each stamp on our passports, every step we took on common or foreign ground, led us on the journey of self-discovery. Vietnam, 2014, My Child Village. A family of 10 welcomed our large Week Without Walls group with green mangoes, bananas, and ice cold water following our four hour journey from Hanoi, the main city, to this humble small village of Mai Chao. Each wrinkle told a tale and each tobacco stained smile filled our hearts with love and comfort. Before reaching Vietnam, we had already made perceptions and assumptions about how this trip was going to end. Frankly, we thought it'd be no different than all the previous trips we had taken around the world. When we left, however, all of our past perceptions and beliefs were changed. We, had, we witnessed the power of a united community. We had made a family with people we had only known for three days. We sweat seven hours a day in hopes of building an empire for people who treated us like kings and queens. We returned back to our longhouse exhausted and slept under a roof made solely of woven tree leaves and a floor composed of broken bamboo. With our own two eyes, we witnessed poverty at its worst. We saw an amputated man work day in and day out in hopes of supporting his families. We saw little kids use fruits as toys because they had nothing else to play with. We also witnessed, however, happiness at its peak. We saw the vibrant smiles, continuous generosity, and the purest forms of hope. Not once did we hear the sound of complaining. 2017, Mumbai, Kohinoor Village. The pollution shaded the skies, garbage was piled on every sidewalk, every road was cracked and sewage water was streaming down the middle, tuk-tuks and motorcycles filled what seemed to be every inch of the roads. When we stared outside the shuttle window, we saw a scene completely different to what we had imagined, a scene completely different to all the misconceptions and stereotypes that were engraved in our mind before we had gone. On our first day, we took about a 45-minute drive to Daharavi one of the world's largest slums, home to roughly one million people. We saw old men and women hauling heavy bags on their backs and balancing trays on their heads. We saw young children running the streets barefoot. Homes were made merely of corrugated metal stacked on top of each other, leaving no room for comfort. Little kids were sitting on the filthy floors of the slums. Their feet were buried in the dirt, yet their smiles were never erased. As we walked through the residential streets, we felt a sense of community and a sense of belonged happiness. Little kids were dressed in their uniforms, ready to go to school as they waved and said hello. We watched every step we took, trying to avoid the garbage and the sewage, yet people were happy. They proved to us that despite the poverty they lived through day in and day out, they were happy. They could be happy. Jordan, Ghazdakam, 1968, 55 kilometers of north of Amman. Our beloved country hosts up to 2 million registered Palestinian refugees who forcefully fled their homes um, after being forcefully removed from their homes in hopes of building a safer environment for their families. One would imagine that because the camp has been around for almost three generations, major progress would have been made. But despite, because of the unfortunate circumstances, People of the community are still unable to get working permits and are unable to pay for their college tuitions. Two weeks ago, I was fortunate enough to visit the camp and speak to the residents about the daily struggles they faced. Some problems seemed unsolvable and frustrated both the residents and myself. I began imagining how much pain they endured and how much heartache they had been through. Failure was at every pit stop they would make. Yet the people were still saying Alhamdulillah. They thank God for placing them in a safe environment when their homes were forcefully taken away. They thank God for the raging rain that ripped through their weak ceilings because it nourished the land of Jordan. They even thank God for the scorching heat because it fed their, fed their crops and helped their agriculture. Despite all the brutal days they faced, their hope was never erased. They turned what was once just an empty land filled with UN tents into a prosperous community filled with loving families and small enterprises. Their small enterprises today have made a footprint around the world, leading them to better futures. They have turned saddened families and shattered hearts into guiding forces that have paved the way for their coming generations. Our journeys, long or short, have brought us closer to our people, closer to our home, and closer on our journeys of self-discovery. 
from Vietnam to Mumbai, and finally the Gaza camp. It is the reeking smells and the tiring days that have helped us in building great communities of passion and hope. It is everything they told us to fear that we finally found beauty in. Thank you.